Shalom, and welcome to Via Havta Yisrael, a Hebrew phrase which means you shall love Israel. We hope you'll stay with us for the next 30 minutes as our teacher, Dr. Baruch, shares his expository teaching from the Bible. Dr. Baruch is the senior lecturer at the Zera Avraham Institute based in Israel. Although all courses are taught in Hebrew at the Institute, Dr. Baruch is pleased to share this weekly address in English. To find out more about our work in Israel, please visit us on the web at loveisrael.org. That's one word, loveisrael.org. Now, here's Baruch with today's lesson. Small children usually submit to authority. They look to their parents, teachers, those who do, in fact, have authority differently than oftentimes adults. And this willingness to acknowledge authority, which is intrinsic to small children, is a spiritual trait that is very pleasing to God because we are only going to walk in obedience, living a life that is praiseworthy, if and only then we acknowledge God's authority in our life. Take out your Bibles and look with me to the book of Matthew and chapter 19. The book of Matthew and chapter 19. Now, we saw in a previous chapter, chapter 18, that Messiah warned individuals about being a stumbling block, being an offense, causing one of these little ones, a child, to stumble in their faith, to move away from the things of God. And what are we going to see as we begin our study at this time? How little children are foundational in this section. So look at verse 13, the book of Matthew chapter 19 and verse 13. We read here. Then they brought to him, that is to Yeshua, they brought to him little children. And this word is just that, one word that refers to children that are very, very young, oftentimes we say children like this are impressionable. They are easily formed, and that is exactly what this scripture is speaking about. How small children, if you disciple them, invest spiritually into them, there's going to be usually a good response. Do you know that most people who come to faith, that is, receive the gospel, they do so prior to their 18th birthday. And that's why it's so important that we see things correctly in regard to this passage and small children. So something good is taking place. Look again at verse 13. Then they brought to him little children in order that he should set the hands upon them and pray. Now, this was a, a common and normal tradition that among the spiritual leaders of Israel, that people would bring children and ask these leaders, those that had respect within the community, those who demonstrated an obedience, a sensitivity to the things of God, who had a testimony that the community saw was obedient to the word of God, that they would ask these individuals, to bless their children. So what's happening here is not uh, unusual at all. But what takes place next is because as this was going on, look at the second part of verse 13, but the disciples, and this is another example of how the disciples, Messiah is moving one way, he is concerned about one thing, but the disciples, they're thinking about something else. So these individuals, they bring these very young, impressionable children to Yeshua that he might lay hands upon them, bless them, and also pray for them. But the disciples, middle of verse 13, but the disciples rebuke them. Now, it's interesting because this word them, naturally, we would think that the disciples they would be rebuking those that were bringing the children. But this word 
appears several times. And every time it appears in this section, it is in regard to these little children. And this just shows how the disciples, they're not getting it. They're not understanding the purpose, the plan, the spiritual truth that Messiah is wanting to impart to them. And this brings us to a very important question, and it's this. Are you and I, we who are supposed to be his disciples, are we moving in the same direction as he is? Are we following the leadership of the Holy Spirit? Are we growing in obedience and understanding to the things of God? Are we living out the life of Messiah in us and through us? And there's a testimony concerning this. Or is the Holy Spirit leading one way and we're going another? So these disciples, they rebuke them. And as I said, if we pay attention to the grammatical term, them, it's in regard to these little children. Moving them aside, interfering in what these others who brought them had intended to do. Notice now Messiah's response. And we see that same conjunction which shows a contrast, a difference. But Yeshua said, Permit the little children and do not forbid them to come unto me. Now, two words here are very important. And if you come from a rabbinical background, you're going to know what these words are and why it's so significant. And I'm talking about the word permit or allow and the word forbid or prohibit. See, one who wants to be a spiritual leader in Judaism, a rabbi, one of the first things that he learns is a course on that which is mutar, permissible, allowed, and those things which are asur, that is forbidden and prohibited. And when we look here, what the text is imparting to us is this. The disciples, even though, and remember, we're getting to the end of the Gospel of Matthew. Very certainly, Messiah is going to go up to Jerusalem for that final time. And therefore, Yeshua has been teaching these 12 men for three years approximately. And what the scripture is telling us is the very basics of Judaism, the faith of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. These disciples, they're not learning. Once more, it's an example to teach you and me, the reader, that his disciples are not growing in their understanding, their perception of what Messiah is about. So Yeshua says, verse 14, Permit the little children and do not forbid them to come unto me, for unto these is the kingdom of heaven. Now, we're going to see that there's an emphasis here beginning in this verse, verse 14, on the kingdom of heaven. And this is going to be foundational for the next passage because we're going to meet one who does not understand how to submit to authority. And one's failure to do that will stunt their spiritual growth, hinder them from maturing and being able to follow after Yeshua. So one of the foundational questions that we need to ask ourselves daily, it's this, am I acknowledging Yeshua's authority in my life? Am I submitting? Am I humbling myself? And am I pursuing the will of God? There is that inherent relationship between submitting to God's authority and embracing his will so he tells these disciples something very important allow the children to come to me do not forbid them for such to these he says is the kingdom of heaven and what did he do 
he laid his hands upon them, and then he departed from there. Now, this was just two verses, but again, it lays the foundation for what we're going to be studying in this session. We read in the next part, verse 16, a very important phrase, and behold. I've shared with you numerous times that that expression, and behold, should capture our attention. We should see it as the scripture telling the reader, this is important. In other words, this is the primary passage. The ones concerning these little children just introduced, taught a, a fundamental principle that's going to be applied here for our understanding of the text. Look again at verse 16. And behold, one came. He said to him, that is, he came and he said to Yeshua. One of these, in another passage, leaders. This one had insight. He was supposed to be someone of maturity, understanding in the laws of God, the commandments of Moses, someone who was respected. And even though he was young, we're going to see something. He had much prosperity. So this one comes and he speaks to Yeshua. He says to him, second part of verse 16, Good teacher, what must I do in order that I should have eternal life? Now, when we hear that phrase, eternal life, normally we think of that as entering into the kingdom. And that's probably foundational here, but eternal life also speaks to a behavior now that we demonstrate this phrase eternal life we need to understand it as a kingdom life we should the moment we believe being led by that holy spirit we should demonstrate a kingdom character making kingdom decisions how things are going to be done in the kingdom of god we should live according to that now that's what it means, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Now, ultimately, that's going to be the reality. But we, to have that proper testimony, to be individuals that live a praiseworthy life, we should demonstrate that now in this age. That's why we're here. That's why we've been filled with the Holy Spirit. That's why. We are servants, disciples of Messiah. So this one comes and he speaks in a very flattering way. He says, good teacher, what must I do in order to inherit, to have eternal life? And verse 17, notice, and don't make the air that many people do in Yeshua's response. Verse 17 but he said to him, why me do you call good? Now, here's what one who is not properly trained in the word of God and the methodologies for interpreting the scripture thinks. See, many use this as a way of attacking the divinity of Yeshua. And I'm speaking about, of course, Jesus of Nazareth. Saying here, when he's called good teacher, he pushes that term away. He does not. He's clarifying something. Because this man is asking a question. And the test is this. Why is he coming to Yeshua with that question? Does he really acknowledge Yeshua as godly authority? And therefore, Yeshua says to him, why me do you call good? For no one is good except one. And who is that? The God. Not just God, but the God. The creator of heavens and earth, one God. The God of Israel. Now, here again, what he's saying to him is not, 
I'm pushing this description, this adjective away from me. I'm not good. Only God's good, and I'm not God. Therefore, uh, don't call me good. That is not the proper way to understand it. He is clarifying something. When this one came and said, good teacher, you see, this is how many times people would, would address their leaders in Judaism. Good teacher. And the word teacher here is similar to the concept of rav or rabbi. So, so good teacher. The question is this. Yeshua is saying, you know, only one is good. That's God. Are you responding to me as God? Are you going to hear what I'm saying and acknowledge my authority? Are you believing that I am the son of God? Is that why you're coming to me? with this question, because it doesn't matter what just some man says, some great teacher perhaps, that's not what's important. What is important is the one who is sovereign, God. What does he say about it? So that's what Yeshua is getting at when he says, why are you calling me good? There's only one who is good, that is the God. Is that how you are thinking of me? Are you going to hear what I say and submit as to the living God? That's what Messiah is saying to this young individual. Verse, verse 17, second part. He says, but if you want to enter into, pay attention to this, if you want to enter into the life. Now, most Bibles say, if you want to enter into life, that's not what it says. In fact, I checked 30 translations and only one, the Young's literal translation, gets it right. They have that definite article. And why is it important? Because in the same way when it says only one is good, the God, it specifies the one true God. And now when it speaks about the life, once more that definite article's there. And in the text, it, it unites the living God, the one true God, with this specific type, quality of life. Are you wanting to live the quality of life that God has for you? And the only way to do this, and this is intrinsic in this passage, this is why it was introduced with these small children. Are you willing to submit to authority? You've come, we're going to see, he's come to Jesus of Nazareth, Yeshua HaMashiach, to ask this question. Well, does he really acknowledge Yeshua as the authority in providing the answer? That's the question that not just this, this young man, but each and every one needs to ask. Is Yeshua the authority for entering into eternal life and living the life that God wants one to live now at this time. So he says to him in this passage, but if you want to enter into the life, notice his answers, keep the commands. Now, is that how one is saved? Keeping the commands? No. We know that the scripture says no one, did you hear that? No one is justified by, by works, but rather by grace. But we see something. What do we see? We see that the commandments were given. Paul teaches this. We see that also foundationally in the law of Moses, the Torah. The law was given in order to point out the people's sin. And why was that? Because when one is not walking, and hear this carefully, when one is not walking in faith, they're going to be in sin. It is only when I walk in faith, and that word faith relates to truth. When only I apply the truth to my life, that's faith, then and only then I'm going to be living in a way that's not living in sin, but living in the righteousness of God. So, he says, keep the commandments. Now, what would I say if I heard this? I would say, 
I am in trouble. Because I'm not keeping the commandments, I am a sinner. And if entering into life, having eternal life, is based upon keeping the commandments, I am in trouble. But see, this man, notice how he responds. Yeshua says, keep the commandments. Look now to verse 18. And he said to him, that is, this man says to Yeshua, which ones? And Yeshua said, basically, he responded to some of the Ten Commandments. He says, uh, you shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, and you shall not bear false witness. Verse 19, honor your father and mother and love your neighbor as yourself. Now, all of these commandments have something in common. They are my responsibility to my neighbor, to someone else. It's not about me and my responsibility to God, but me to others. Now, why would he pick those type of commandments? Well, see, many people might say, you know, when it comes to God, I do pretty good. I, I, I go to the synagogue or I go to a place of worship. I, I, I pay my tithes. I, I'm generous. I try to be a nice person and such. I read the scriptures. All of that. I guess I'm doing pretty good. But see, here's the problem. When it comes to behaving properly to others, it's much more difficult because we encounter others all the time. And when it says, you shall not bear false witness and love your neighbor as yourself and always, always, always honor your mother and your father, obviously, we all, we all short, fall short of that. But this man, notice his response. When he hears this, verse 20, this young man says to him, says to Yeshua, all of these, and this is emphatic, it's emphasized, he says, all of these I have kept, for how long? From my youth. What more, he says, what else do I lack? Now, that's a pretty bold statement where he says, all of these, loving my neighbor as myself, honoring my parents, never bearing false witness, never telling a lie, I've done all of these from my youth up. See, here again, what happens when I hear this? I fall under conviction. I know that I am a sinner. The hearing of the commandments of God reminds me, and here's what's so important. It reminds me of my need of God's grace, my need for God to forgive me. But this individual, no. He felt within himself, based upon his deeds, that he was acceptable to God. Now, notice how Messiah is able to get to the very heart of the matter and understand what this one, what really inside of him was, was not right. Verse 21, Yeshua says to him, if you want to be perfect. Now, that word perfect means to arrive at the proper destination, live in a way that truly meets God's expectations. It is the same word that describes Yeshua when he perfectly, and I want to emphasize this, perfectly submitted to his heavenly Father and went to that cross and died there, giving his life for you and me. When he says one of the last things, it is finished, it literally means it is done perfectly. It is completed exactly the way that, that God's will demands. So Yeshua says, if, if you want to be perfect, is that what you're asking? And this is what this man wanted to do. He wanted to exalt himself. So Yeshua says, if therefore you want to be perfect, here's what you're supposed to do. Go and sell. You sell all of your possessions and give them to the poor 
and then you will have treasures in heaven. And come and follow me. Now, notice that. He got his answer. What did he call Yeshua previously? He says to him, good teacher. Why is that so important? Good relates to God. Yeshua says to him, why are you calling me good? Only one is good, God. Are you going to hear my response and respond to it with, with submissiveness as to the word, the instruction of God? This is at the heart of this passage. And he heard the response, the answer to his question. And what was his response to that? We'll look at our last verse, verse 22. And after hearing this young one, having heard the word, he departed how? He departed full of sadness, grieved. Why? For he was one having great, and the word here is property. Now, he had a lot of possessions, but he also had a lot of property. And that's why he's known elsewhere in the scripture as the rich young ruler. Now, he had a desire to be religiously the tops, be impressive. That's why he comes and says, good teacher. He said this flattering. That's how many people do. They flatter individuals. Why? In order to manipulate them in saying what they want to hear, in agreeing with their perspective. Yeshua never did that. He always agreed with the truth of his heavenly father. And he was able to pinpoint immediately this man's weakness spiritually that he loved wealth he loved his possessions he wasn't interested in being perfect he wasn't one who was going to submit to the authority of god and sell and follow after yeshua so my question to you is this what about you are you willing to submit to the teachings of yeshua of jesus of nazareth obey them so that you can have a life that is pleasing to God. See, this passage at the heart's not talking about salvation, but it's talking about having a pleasing testimony. Well, we hope you will benefit from today's message and share it with others. Please plan to join us each week at this time and on this channel for our broadcast of loveisrael.org. Again, to find out more about us, please visit our website, loveisrael.org. There you will find articles and numerous other lectures by Baruch. These teachings are in video form. You may download them or watch them in streaming video. Until next week, may the Lord bless you in our Messiah Yeshua, that is, Jesus, as you walk with Him. Shalom from Israel.